guys it's Tam welcome back to my channel today I'll be doing um, day seven in my mental health journal in observance of mental health awareness month it goes from May 1st to May 31st and so um, I've been doing these pages and posting them on my Instagram account which is linked down below if you're interested in seeing them but I'm gonna do a little flip through here as well so that you can just go through um, the pages that I've done already if you're not on Instagram and so we are on day seven and starting off day seven i already have some paint down on the page and it was just leftover paint from another project and so i just wiped it down on the page because i knew this was something that i'm working in every day and so i could go ahead and get it started and so i just put down some like peach colored paint so i'm using a stencil to also put down some distress ink and you're going to pretty much see the process but if you have any questions please leave those down below i honestly don't mind answering any questions that you guys have and if i can assist in any way i do not mind doing so the images that i'm using in this project for the 31 days are basically images that i pulled from google i did find some mental health stickers but they were kind of expensive i think i saw a couple of people who were selling them i don't know it was it was like maybe seven to ten stickers for like a dollar each for each sticker so eight or nine dollars a pack and i just felt like that was kind of expensive i'm used to getting like a whole pack of stickers for like five dollars and i know that you know some people you know that may not be such a big deal but i want more bang for my book and so i'm using images from google so if your money is like mine and you don't have a whole lot of it to spare because one pack of stickers i would have to have gotten almost 50 dollars worth of stickers to last me 31 days and so that just wasn't in the budget so i just went on google and i researched um mental health images clip arts pictures photos and things like that and i got thousands of images and i just you know copy paste and print it and so that's the things that you're seeing me use for this 31 days and so i'm just slapping paint down on the page some of it with stencils some of it with my finger some of her some of it i'm going to uh, splash down with the brush i mean so just getting you know my hands dirty and not really caring about at the end of the day how i'm accomplishing the end goal of the page i just you know i'm thinking about mental health and the stigmas surrounding it and my own personal journey with it and i'm just you know relieving some stress and just thinking about it and getting through this process for this day now um once again i want to share with every one of these videos that i upload something about my own mental health journey personally i don't want to just give you guys statistics but i also want to share and i want you to feel free to do so as well down there in the comment section several people have shared i appreciate you guys for being transparent and not feeling embarrassed or ashamed because that's the whole point of breaking the stigma around mental health it is nothing to be embarrassed about um, you're not embarrassed if you find out you have cancer. You're not embarrassed if you find out that you broke your leg. You're not embarrassed if you find out that you're suffering from some heart disease or whatever. So mental health is no different. It is an illness and we have to continue to battle it and treat it like an illness. And we just have to take it day by day. So um, I think the last thing I share with you guys in my last video was that I have been dealing with mental health issues since I was a child and then I went through a long period of time where I don't feel like I was really um, as um, unable to function as I used to be as a younger you know a younger person but then um, just recently the last couple of years i've kind of found myself back in you know some mental health challenges as a result of just some pent-up stress and really not paying attention to how i'm dealing with certain things in my life so um as a child though um 
one of the things that I remember about one of the times I attempted suicide was I was dating a I was dating an older guy in high school and I don't even know if dating is the right word because we were kind of sneaking around with each other we weren't supposed to be together because he was older and you know my mom just wasn't having it so I was probably around 13 years old and he was probably 17 18 getting ready to graduate from high school and so we weren't supposed to even be together I think um he was in the band and I was in the band and that's just kind of how we met and it went from that to us you know hanging out a little bit more than we should have been and eventually the relationship turned sexual in nature and I found myself 13 years old pregnant guys and so I just felt you know in that when my mom found out you know that was a whole different situation and I just felt worthless I felt unworthy of you know love he didn't want me anymore and his mom was having a fit she was like you know this girl isn't going to ruin your future and you're not going to be tied down to some young girl with a baby you know that's not what we see for you in your future and so my mom was like you know um you're not getting ready to have no baby at 13 years old just the the pressure the emotions and just the unhealthy way that whole situation was handled it just caused me to feel worthless it just caused me to feel like i was not worthy of love i had disappointed everybody and i just didn't want to live anymore so i remember just as clear as day going in our bathroom locking the door and we had you know all kinds of peels in there and i just took them i just went through the bathroom and i just took every peel bottles of peels and i just swallowed them and i went in the room and i just laid down to die and this was me at 13 years old guys and um but god had a different story god had a different story for my life and so i didn't die obviously i'm here talking to you guys but it just goes to show the state of mind that i was in at the time and just how i have a testimony of how god brought me out of that situation and it just goes to show how fragile just one incident and how it's handled could contribute to someone having a mental breakdown and that was kind of like the went from you know just feeling unloved feeling you know like I, ha I had a lot of self-esteem issues body image issues I didn't feel pretty enough didn't feel like I looked good didn't feel like my hair was right so I went from being a teenager dealing with all of those inadequacies and or feeling inadequate but from that to then getting pregnant and then making you know my first attempt at committing suicide as a young girl and so just for somebody out there that's listening we just have to hang in there and we we can't let the pressures of life get us down i know that's easier said than done guys i'm walking the same walk that you guys are walking but i just want to share that we're all struggling we all have struggled and some of us are you know just continuing to struggle and we're just taking it day by day and so um that's just i just want to share with you guys where i came from and how i came out of all of that into what i felt was a healthy place and then i just kind of find myself back in that in that place right now you know where i'm just not my best mental self so um i want to share some statistics about mental health in regards to the black brown people of color communities 
So you see here on the screen where I am, um, I found an image online that says black mental health matters. And then there's a lady there with a baby who kind of looks sad and maybe even suffering from postpartum, which is also a real mental illness. After some women have babies, they just feel like they can't handle the pressure of being a mom or maybe you have multiple children and it's just it's too much and it starts to you know play on you mentally and you just have struggles in that area so I know several people who have dealt with postpartum depression and sometimes you know it it's hard to come out of that to care for your baby to care about your other kids that you may have as well so I thought this was a good image to put on the screen um, I'm sorry to put the image on the screen I thought it was good to put down for this particular page that's talking about black mental health because um, there's a lot of um, racial disparities regarding black mental illness and so I just want to read you guys some of the statistics that I pulled off of psychiatry.org uh, about um, mental illness in the community of black people as well as people with um, um, just in in poor areas that live in poor you know neighborhoods and things like that so um the rates of mental illnesses in the african-american communities are similar with those of the general population however disparities exist in regards to mental health care services african-americans often receive poor quality of care and lack of access to culturally competent uh, care lack of access to culturally competent care one in three african americans who need mental health care receives it african americans with any mental illness have lower rates of any mental health service which includes prescription medication outpatient service but higher use of inpatient services um, compared to other races, African Americans are less likely to receive guided, consistent care, less frequently included in research, more likely to use emergency rooms or their primary care physician rather than mental health specialists. Compared with the general population, African Americans are less likely to be offered either evidence-based medication therapy or psychotherapy. African Americans are more frequently diagnosed with schizophrenia and less frequently diagnosed with mood disorders. Differences in how African Americans express symptoms of emotional distress may contribute to their misdiagnosis. Uh, physician patient communications often differ for African Americans. Physicians were more likely to be verbally dominating in their communications with their African American patients than with other races. Black people with mental health conditions, particularly schizophrenia, bipolar disorders, and other psychosis are more likely to be incarcerated than any other race. And just some barriers about uh, black people and people of color and how they um, receive care and the stigmas associated with the black, brown and people of color communities. Um, despite recent efforts to improve mental health care services for African Americans and other minority groups, barriers remain regarding access to and quality of care. Some of the barriers are the stigma associated with mental illness, distrust of the healthcare system, lack of providers from diverse racial and ethnic backgrounds, lack of culturally competent providers, lack of insurance or under insurance, and the importance of family privacy the lack of knowledge regarding available treatments, denial of mental health problems, some concerns about the stigma, medications and not receiving appropriate information about services and dehumanizing services have also been reported to hinder African Americans from accessing mental health services. 
So that's just something to think about, um, guys. It's just not mental health across the board. It's sad to report that we have people not receiving adequate mental health care based on their race. And so that just makes me sad. That makes me mad and all these other emotions as well. We have to advocate for ourselves, number one, and we have to advocate for people who aren't advocating for themselves. So no matter what your race is, if you see someone who needs help with mental health care services, be their voice, you know, be the person who speaks up for them. Because I come from a generation of, I come from a little small town back in the woods in Mississippi. Um, it was a little poor area, wasn't a whole lot of um, income and services and housing and just basic health care. And so we had people in our area as well as people in our family who we knew something was not right mentally and nothing was ever done. You know, we just waved it off as, oh, so-and-so, so-and-so is crazy. Oh, we don't know what's wrong with him. That's the way he's always act. Or, you know, she is, you know, dealing with something because her daddy used to beat her and she's just acting out or she's, prom you know, promiscuous. I mean, all of these things tie into mental health issues that need to be addressed, properly diagnosed and treated. And so that's just something I wanted to share about you know that class of people that race of people that population of people where you know we as a black brown and people of color community are sometimes the last to receive adequate and quality care regarding our mental illnesses so we just got to continue to advocate and we got to continue to speak up and out for each other and we just got to make sure that we're doing our part to help bridge those gaps so that everybody is treated fair, especially in healthcare, it would seem like we wouldn't be dealing with something as serious as people being properly cared for in the healthcare industry, but it exists, guys, it exists. And we're gonna just have to make sure we're doing our part in participating in being the voice for those who are unable to speak for themselves or for those who aren't being heard when they do speak for themselves. So um, I pretty much wrapped up this page. As you guys can see on screen, I stuck everything down using my Fabri-Tac glue. Today is day seven. So I put that big number seven and then I'm doing my writing. And then I put a little um, statistic down at the bottom of the page as well. It just says one in four Americans suffer from a diagnosable mental disorder. Minority populations are less likely to receive diagnosis for their behavior health issues and have less access to mental health services. So I put that down and I'm just handwriting, um, doing my journaling there, writing it in between those gaps that I left there so that I can, um, do some writing there. And that's pretty much it guys. I did my very first um, therapy session on today, which I'm going to talk about in a, another video when I, you know, upload my next video for this series here on my channel. So you guys can look forward to that. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so that you can know when I upload new videos. All of my information is down in the description of this video, which includes a second channel where I journal in my Bible and talk about my faith, Instagram, PO box, my Etsy shop and all that stuff is down there. So please check it out. Leave a comment down below if you guys have something that you want to share or if you want to just, you know, make a comment about, you know, some of the things that was brought about in this video. And I would love to hear from you guys. It is always a pleasure. I hope you guys know I appreciate every single one of you. And as always, I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Until then, you be safe and take care. Bye.